in the beautiful city of Buenos Aires, Argentina, in the 70s, where the skies are always blue, a bit like on this picture. As a kid, I was fascinated by two things, surfing and computers. Yes, I was a bit of a nerd, I guess you could say that. And as such, I was often sitting on a beach and staring at the ocean, fantasizing about the future, imagining how the world would look like in 50 or 100 years. Today, we are writing 2020, just about 50 years forward into the future. And I'm recording this talk from France, confined to this studio, unable to travel to the countdown event in person. I'm sure you would agree with me, no doubt, that this is a crucible moment in human history, in which leadership will define whether we can meet critical, economic, social, political, or environmental challenges. But at the same time, we seem to be a little short of true global leaders. But why is that? Maybe we are just waiting a new type of leadership to emerge? This August, I participated with 600 fellow young global leaders from more than 100 countries in the first ever virtual Young Global Leaders Annual Summit, organized by the World Economic Forum, sort of mini Davos. You can see me there in the middle, just above the letter B, I'm wearing my nerdy glasses. The theme of the summit was Resetting Our Future coined by Klaus Schwab, the founder of the World Economic Forum and, a young, and the Young Global Leaders community. We talked about how to create a more inclusive, sustainable future that contributes towards the 2030 Agenda and also the Fourth Industrial Revolution. With uh, members of this community, fellow Young Global Leaders, we conducted an open crowdsourced research project over the past years with the title World at 50.0, which I want to introduce to you today. While we know that no person can predict the future, individuals can see snippets. Our aim was to collect many of these snippets and piece them together to answer the question. How will the world possibly look like in the next 50 years? Using a variety of social media tools, we invited selected global leaders, both young and old, artists, academics, university students, to share their own glimpse of the future. And we also asked them what they thought about the future of leadership. You'll be happy to learn that the grand majority of respondents were cautiously optimistic about the future. This is what they had to say. First, we are entering a human age, or the age of empathy, where Moore's law can be applied to the human potential curve. Second, humans will lose their natural biological identities and become homo nanotechnus. Third, it's just a matter of time before we can download ourselves fully into the digital domain and in doing so, pull a plug on our biological identities. And fourth, the future will be about the use of technology and science to connect us with nature instead of thinking that we can control it. Now, a rapidly changing future will obviously call for a new type of leadership to emerge. I will summarize for you the most interesting ideas in this domain coming out of the survey. Current leadership styles are typically trying to figure out how to transform a top-down hierarchical organization and answer the question how to lead in the period of change, a little bit like right now during the COVID pandemic. They rely on best practices and latest research in cognitive and social sciences, trying to figure out how to influence and persuade others. And they are longing for the new, but are raised, educated, and still very used to the old world. 
Now let's compare these with leadership styles likely to emerge in the future. They will rely on neuroscience to integrate mindfulness strategies enhancing performance and resilience. They will be more aware of methods of manipulation, ensuring that responsible leaders remain ethical and use their talents for good. They will try to transition towards flat organic network organizations based on connected autonomy, improving their ability to scale. Not surprisingly, according to our results, future global challenges to leadership will center around the following four topics. First, the emergence of conscious capitalism and a stronger sharing and circular economy. Foreseeing less power at the center and more devolution towards the people, resulting in a redesign of global institutions. We will be pushing buttons on the screen. The democratic process will be far more interactive. Votes will be cast not only every four years. Second, disruptive industries and entrepreneurship. The whole botox and connected industries will be much more advanced. We could be looking just the way we wa want at any given time, at uh, any age. Or your toilet will warn you to be careful not to consume too much unhealthy food because you are at risk of developing diabetes. Third, striving to find better ways to live in harmony with nature. But the future will also pose new challenges to the human mind to control the evolving machines going potentially haywire. Just imagine a machine harassing your spouse. And fourth, uh, the emergence of cities with global influence, as well as the future collapse of national borders. Large city mayors could play a major role, like in ancient times. In fact, big cities have more in common than nation states. A new governance model could arise, giving the largest 40 cities more power, the citizens being able to vote instantly on major issues affecting their cities, fully connected and aware of what's happening in real time. Regarding the future of education, our respondents provided some stimulating foresight as well. First, we'll see the hyper-efficiency of human capital. Leadership education, as well as general education, will be radically reformed. Experiential and internet-based learning change will change the classroom model as we know it. Collaborating people across the world will be the norm. Second, mapping the human potential will be a game changer. Our education system will change to put more focus on emotional intelligence, collaboration, discipline, imagination, creativity, empathy, respect, and morals. In the future, the world will need people with new life skills. Third, every person will be able to apply their unique DNA of talent. How will companies discover talent? They may come to you just by data mining your social profile. And fourth, and this is my favorite, our brains and human knowledge will become eternal. We will have lifelong education that is focused on enriching our biological lives before we transition entirely into a digital existence. Our brains and knowledge will become eternal through networked learning. Newton, Einstein, Mozart will be teaching us themselves. Imagine the opportunities. We will know so much about all of them that we could digitally recreate them, almost resurrect them. So, now, you might wish to know how best to prepare and thrive in the future. Here is some privileged advice from our wise survey respondents. Are you ready? Okay, here it goes. First, follow your passion, hassle, hassle. 
technology will most likely not take over basic human values like tolerance, love, compassion. The world will never become a robot. Second, exercise compassion, resilience, and adapt. Ethics will become much more important as we unlock the brain. Future leaders should inquire, going deeper and deeper, asking questions. Values are like muscles. They grow and are reinforced with use. Third, spread and scale stuff. Be adaptive and remain curious. Nobody can predict what will happen, and adaptation is key to survival. Keep something special that makes you interesting in the wake of change. And fourth, do new things every day and practice mindfulness, presence, being kind. We should ask our kids not what they want to be, but what problem in the world do they want to solve. To conclude, the aim of the World at 50.0 project is to build our future together and faster, a better future that we want our children and their children to inherit. I would like to leave you with a picture of the future where a family is sitting around their smart dining table. All take a big breath and synchronicity devices bring everyone on the same wavelength before dining. Cool, right? Well, let's try something like that, okay? Let's take a big breath together. Behind your masks, if you are wearing one, close your eyes and imagine you are staring at the ocean and concentrate on picturing a better and healthier future. You may reopen your eyes now and breathe again. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Take care.